Well, God bless you in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I welcome each and every one of you, all my viewers. I want to thank God for you. Thank God for your husband, for your wife, and your children, and your beloved ones. And uh, it is well, you are all welcome this day. And uh, whether you are hearing the sound of my voice, be in Africa, be in any part of the world, be in, be in, in uh, Europe, even in UK, all, all I do know is that it is well with you. And uh, to God be the glory and to God be the honor. And don't give up in whatever you, you are doing. Don't resign to faith. Don't hate yourself. And don't begin to have a blame game issue and finding whom to blame. Uh, but just give God the glory and thank him because he will see you through. Uh, because life is not a bed of roses, of course. And uh, because life is life. We're talking about life. We have been teaching about the issues of life concerning coverage. But before then, I need to say this and say it well. I need to thank each and every one of you, all my viewers, all of you. It, it, this program has been fantastic. From the emails and from the phone calls and from the text messages, some of you have been praying for us all these years. But you have been part of this program and you have made it what it is. And we have viewership in, in the millions or billions now, in Jesus' name. So, but we need to thank God for you that have been part of this program. More especially, where you call in and you add value. Some of you disagree. Some of you agree. All of us are adding value. And that has made it interesting and interactive. Above all, the program has some spiritual aspect about it. Many people have called us even on live program about the healing, about the breakthrough, about how God has touched them and how their prayer life have changed. You cannot quantify this in, from any uh, monetary uh, perspective. No, because it is important. And we give him all the glory. So I'm thanking you there out there all my viewers, and more especially, I don't know, I can't thank you enough, those of you that do so into this ministry. Is that your giving that has made us to be on air and will continue to be on air? And thank God, we will soon have our own platform, our own, everything we have, our own tell is going to be awesome. It's going to be glorious. Things are getting to plan, and we wish and we pray that it will come to a fruitful end. And uh, we thank God for that and expect that things, and I will equally invite you to be part of the program. That is when I'm going to call all of you to sow into, what, uh, into the new platform that will come up. And God will bless every home. But however, some people have been touched now. We don't talk money on air, but people are sowing. People, even men and women of God, are sowing into this work. And only God. One, I can't bless you, of course, because I don't have anything I will use to bless you. But the God that made me and you, that sees in secret, that sees your effort, and that sees my effort, he will bless you, bless your family, bless your children, bless your husband, and bless your wife. Above all, none of us will die before our time. That is the bottom line. Now, talking about tomorrow is Sunday, of course, and you do know. It's going to be awesome. Be part of the service. The first service is on Sunday from 9 o'clock in the morning to 11.30. And the second service and the last, the family service joined now, is from 12 noon to 2 p.m. Next Wednesday, you must not miss the teaching I'm doing on Veil. And we're going to practicalize it prophetically. And as I said, when people are coming, bringing something as a point of contact, for us to pray and cancel veil. So anything that can cover. But don't go and bring all the whole wrapper in your home. Just a little one will be a point of contact. I will pray. I believe in the prophetic. It's just like if you don't give, you can't be blessed. So you must, you must give to be blessed. So it is the prophetic. That is faith without work is dead. So, so. It, so when we pray and do certain things, you must have the power and the unction. So be part of the Wednesday service and the time is 10 a.m. 
in the morning till 12 noon, because 12 p.m., all things being equal, and things are always equal at times. Now, what else do I have? Yeah, there's somebody there looking at me. God has remembered you for good. And let God equally remember me and Jesus' sanctuary and all my viewers and our members for good. And God bless you. Choir. Father in heaven, how we love you. We live to let me know the end. May your kingdom be established in our praises, Lord. As your people declare. To the choir. Blessed be the Lord, Lord God, God Almighty. All right. All right. I want you, everybody, stretch your hands. Only you pray. I want you to pray. Everybody, stretch your hands at home. Everybody, as you pray, something is going to happen. And with you, ma. In Jesus' name. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Father, as long as anyone is listening, those listeners at home, anyone wherever in the world they are, whether they are listening on any device, Father Lord, anything they've prayed for, anything they've fasted over, everything they've wished for, everything they've cried over, Lord, Amen. at this moment, Lord, you will grant them the heart desires in the mighty name of Jesus. Anywhere they've been holding any blessings, holding the, the building of Jesus' sanctuary ministries, holding anything that concerns us, every blessings, Lord, that you have promised, every good dream that we have had, Lord. Father, Lord, today the chains have been broken, and mm. wherever it is on our way to us in Jesus' name, this may shall not leave, this may shall not pass before every blessings, every promises, Lord, that you have made would come to pass in Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. Yeah. Well, I claim it. I had, I had, I want her to pray. I had. And she thought, she said, every good dream, every good dream, every, and not it, every of you, and what you have cried over, she said that, 
What you have prayed over, she said that. What you have fasted over, she has said that. And what you have desired, he said this month. And that's why at times, there's this angel from angel in heaven, but he's, he's in charge of the evil people. He said, Abu Monye, Kine Cheremo, Chukwama. Abu Monye, Kine Cheremo, Chukwama. Onye Njo de Kamo, Kine Cheremo, Chukwama. Onye Njo de Kamo, Kine Cheremo, Chukwama. Abu Monye, Kine Cheremo, Chukwama. Abu Monye, Kine Cheremo, Chukwama. Ewo, 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 Onye Njo de Kamo, Kine Cheremo, Chukwama. I don't know who you are. He says, that song said that, Father, who am I that you will remember? Me, a sinner. I don't know who you are. I don't know the length or the depth or the dimension of your sin. All I do know is that nobody is above sin. We are all born in sin. But there is a, there is a Jesus that died over our sin. And his death on the cross of Calvary over me and you will never be in vain. In Jesus' name. Good news has come your way. And that's where you will sing, I have a father, almighty father, who is king of kings and lord of lords. I have a father. I have a father. Oh, I got to stop. I got to stop. There's somebody there. Don't miss our service tomorrow. Either you come in the morning or you come in the afternoon. It will be fantastic. Now, what do I have? I have something for you. We began a teaching about veil. This We began it on Wednesday about veil. And I need to commend all my callers, those of you that called in the week, fantastic. In fact, uh, the man that spoke from Manchester again, my brother Tony from Manchester, you spoke very well. And somehow, he said about his brother, about the sister-in-law, where somebody said that he would not see her have a child. So he was able to understand from that teaching, which is the angle I'm coming from, that words spoken over you can become a veil. But it's not every word that is a veil. Because not every tongue is, is spiritualized. Now, follow me. I'm not teaching you theology because I don't know it. Some people have tongues. Either spiritualized, either ordained, or spiritualized by God, or ordained or spiritualized by Satan. Satan have tongues. God have tongues. And that's why the Bible says, life, death and life is in the power of tongue in Proverbs 18, 21. So today, I want to continue from that dimension where words that speak, that have been spoken over you can be a veil. It can cover your destiny. It can hinder you. It, it, it can truncate you. It can stop you. Even psychologically or from the realm of sociology, if you call a child and tell a child useless boy, if a teacher says a child is useless, that child may end up seeing himself useless. And the child will be, begin to behave the, in the manner pronounced by the teacher. And that is why when in primary school, in nursery school, teachers do give children stars as they do well. And you see a child working hard to, to maintain that the level of confidence and trust between him and the teacher based on the spoken words. The, the guy that called from, yes, uh, from Manchester, I don't know him, he's the, I'm sure he's Tony uh, by his name, God bless him. He says something, and many people there, like there's, there's this story I will share, then I begin from there, and we, and we take it over. And that is why you don't miss the Wednesday prayer. If you have time, if you have time, 
Because time will come when we are going to do a national program for that. But for now, seize the, uh, seize the moment and opportunity and be there coming this Wednesday. Now, there were these two guys who won the USC building in Nigeria at Onicha. I'm telling you a love story. Uh, because they were able to combine their resources together. You know, I am, I am an ex-banker, so I know what I'm saying. And so they were able to buy the, the property for $140 million. But a woman has been in, in that property for so many, but she didn't have enough. She had less than $60 million. Then, of, of um, Naira, then, in Nigeria. But somehow, she, she felt short change. No, about, for no reason. And because there's no short changing. The U.S. said, we want this amount of money. And these guys were able to produce the but They combined. But she gave, she said something to them. And told them, if you pass this particular date, you people have used your connection to take this property from me. Then if you ask, if you pass this particular date, I, I can't remember it now. You will know, write me off. And I thought it's a talk of frustration. A talk of, but she has released a word over the destiny, over their life. Many of you, how many people have released words over your destiny, over your marriage, over your children? It becomes a veil, a covering. It controls you. It can hinder you. Because words are seeds. Words can spread. And words can cover you. Words can uplift you. Words can depress you. So words has weight. Words can be exciting. Words can be destructive. Follow what I'm telling you and you will get something out of it. Now, back to that testimony or the story. And before the death, this man, one of the men died. How? Accident. Where? Um, on the way to Ibadan. So one of them now rushed to me. A big man brought him. I, you know, because I wish I'm this. A big man brought this big man. He's big. But somehow, you know, I don't have this, this anointing of merchandising people. The man was prepared. If I, if I ask for 10 million, he will bring it like that. How did I know? So when he came, we were, uh, before he came, they brought me a bill, and it was uh, in my, in my uh, office. They brought me a bill of uh, our crusade in, uh, in Delta State. Oh, the light is there. Is, ah. The man said, no, no, how much is it? He just, I was just asking the staff, okay, let them wait. He said, about the crusade, no, no, I'm going to take care. He brought the money for crusade. What? My TV program, because I do TV on air in NTA, Delta State. The man, he said he would pay a quarter. And he was following me to the studio. However, I told the man to call the woman to tell her that I am involved in the matter, number one. Number two, that that her words have failed. Because what she spoke over one of them happened. So this other man became scared of his life. It's not coincidence. Because some people say it could be coincidental. How do you prove? It's not everything you prove scientifically. You cannot prove why you can wake up one day and you, and you are so happy. And you, and you wake up the other day, you are so down. For no reason. You are so upset. For nothing. And on, on the other day, you are so happy. For nothing. The same you. Because human beings are complex. Why are we complex? We are spiritual, physical, so, uh, we are, we, we are psychologically wired, sociologically wired, culturally wired. So human beings are complex. Human beings are complex. So you cannot, you cannot bring us under a laboratory condition and begin to analyze human behavior. No. That's why psychology, I mean, to an extent, you, you cannot understand 
who we are. Only the word of God makes us to understand who we are. And that is the truth of the matter. But back to this message. What has happened? Now, the woman has used what they call, some people use spell. The word a, a, a spell is S-P-E-L. L, a spell. Some people can come under spell. And, and they don't know what they are doing. Some people don't know why and why why am I like I mean their lives why are they like that? Why do I why am I behaving the way I'm behaving? Paul says in Romans seven, Paul was Paul was screaming in Romans seven. He said the things that are from verse fourteen. Paul, a man of God, anointed with power, authority. He said, look. I can't get it. I can't get it. The things I don't want to do, I keep doing them. And those things I wish I would do, I mean, that I don't do, I find myself enjoying it. I will do. Romans 7 from verse 14. Yes. For we know that the law is spiritual, uh -huh. but I am carnal, uh -huh. sold under sin. Uh -huh. For that which I do, uh -huh. I allow not. Uh -huh. For what I would, uh -huh. that do I not. Uh -huh. But what I hate, uh -huh. that I do. Uh -huh. If then I do that which I would not, uh -huh. I consent unto the law uh -huh. that it is good. Uh -huh. Now then it is no more I that do it, uh -huh. but sin that dwelleth in me. So if you follow that scripture down, Paul was lamenting. Paul is anointed. Paul has the Holy Spirit. Paul has everything. That's why at times you cannot understand who you are. That's why at times your son or your daughter cannot understand my, his or her life. And she needs spiritual guidance in order for you to bring her and tell her towards a path that will be fulfilling. But these days, all we do in church is to begin to set up church as a social organization. And you, be, and you begin to um, offer palliative and... Um, psychological and uh, sociological interpretation. Keep them busy. Keep the children busy. A child can be busy either for good or for bad. <laughs> being busy doesn't mean it must be good. Busy means a word being engaged. So what are they engaging? But it takes effort. But follow me. What am I trying to say? And that is why some of you can be in a church. You are in this church for 10 years, 5 years, 2 years, 3 years. There's no change in your life. There is nothing to show you are, you are, and you are still there. And the church, as it were, is growing. And you are not growing. It is not possible. The, when the people are growing, the church will grow. But if it is opposite, something is happening. And you are just there in the church, marking time, putting on good suits, and speaking all the good English. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, my, my brother. There's nothing there. You can't go home. You can't travel. Because you may have been bewitched. The bewitchment, one way to spread veil over two people. Yeah, good, yeah. That is the point I'm trying. You see all the things I'm saying. One way to spread the veil toward people, two ways, is where you bewitch them. What is to bewitch? Bewitchment, from my own understanding, comes from where you are, where a superior being controls and manipulates your mindset, that you become a spiritual zombie. You lose your mind. You don't think straight. You are, you have been, as it were, in quote, zombinized, ewunized, goatnized, goatnized. You know, I'm just trying to send it home. Which means that somebody is, is manipulate, manipulating you. So that is one way to spread a veil. And, and that is why you can be in a church. You are a worker in the church. You stand as an usher. You stand in the church. You have nothing to show. It's not possible. Because you are under a veil. You are helpless. You know, but you are helpless. You know, and you have resigned to faith. You know, and there's nobody. That's why Paul was saying something in Acts. 
in Acts 8 9. Paul was lamenting about something. Paul was lamenting seriously. He said, Oh, you, oh, you, this, yes, Paul in Acts 8 9. Acts 8 9. I read from, eight, from Acts 8, 9 to 11. Acts 8 from verse 9. Yes, sir. See? But there was a certain man uh -huh. called Simon, uh -huh. which bef before time in the same city uh -huh. used sorcery. He used what? Sorcery. Sorcery. And bewitched the people of Samaria, uh -huh. saying out that himself was a great one. That means, uh, you, I'm, uh, I'm just, yeah, hold on there. The people, not, not one or two or three, He's talking about people in hundreds or, or thousands. If you look at North Korea, and you see people crying over the president, if you don't cry, you, you, you will be termed a saboteur. And, and they are crying and clapping. They have been bewitched. Look, they are helpless from what we are reading. They are there. No, but they will be crying and see their leader. Who is their leader? They didn't choose him. And they will be crying. Even when they are announcing about him, the newscaster must cry to call his name. That is an example of bewitching the people. So if millions of people can be bewitched, thousands could, hundreds easily. And that is where I'm going, I will tell Continue. Verse 10. Yes. To whom they all gave heed, uh -huh. from the least to the greatest, uh -huh. saying, This man is the great power of God. <laughs> and to him they had regard, uh -huh. because that of a long time uh -huh. he had bewitched them with sorceries. Of a long <laughs> You see this Bible, eh? this Bible is loaded. What is happening in churches now is that the people are bewitched. And that's why I came against eating in the church. And the pastors w were not happy. Um, look, a church is not a place to, to feed the members. You can feed the people on the street. Any man that comes to my church is capable of feeding him so he himself or herself. I believe that. But there are people who are there out in the street. Because we don't go after them because they, they, because they won't bring offering. And even if we, and we claim to give them breakfast and lunch, it's a lie. But the, they are anxious to feed you, you looking at me. You, tomorrow now, you go. <laughs> it's not a lie, it matter. But I just looked and said, this Bible cannot lie. They have been bewitched. Galatians 3. Verse 1. Paul was even saying, apart from the Samaritan, he said, Paul said, even the Galatians. So it means that in the church, it is possible to bewitch. That's why you pray about your pastors, including me. That all those using power, strength powers, not of God. Let every church member keep praying it. The church will be a better place. That any power, including me, we are using, not of God. Let God expose us. Every church member should be able to pray it. Because you have carried your destiny and your future and that of your seed and your children to somebody and you, you don't know the person from Adam. Because sometimes I looked at people, I just said, wow. I would tell you. Galatians 3 from verse 1. Yes. Oh, foolish Galatians. Uh -huh. Who was saying that? Paul. Uh -huh. Who had bewitched you? Uh -huh. That you should not obey the truth. He said, and because some of you here, yeah, you should not obey the truth. Why? Because we have itching ears. We love prophecy. Prophecy doesn't mean it will come to pass. <laughs> there are prophecies and there are prophecy. The, who, the <laughs> what is the source of the prophecy? Because it is like a veil. And you be and it's any prophecy that fails one to everybody, and they tell in six months' time, in one year time, and some of you pay money and you give. And that of course I've said on air, and somebody will say, Pastor, so this or message is me, it's me, and they will be crying on air. I don't know them from Adam, and I don't care. I mean, sorry, I mean God will bless them. 
That is prophecy. If you see, if God will show me something, I will cancel it. I used to have an accountant when I was in the bank. He was in White Garment Church. At times, he would not come with his car. Then I would think he's not in the office. But I would call and say, are you in the office? He said, yes, sir. I said, where is your car? He said, he is coming upstairs to see me. So I thought probably he had, he said, no, my prophet said that there is an there is accident coming, so he will not use the car. I said, then, if, your, if the man saw truly, why can't he cancel it? I will see. I will tell you, go. <laughs> Why? I know. Okay, Acts 16, 16. Acts 16, 16. Yes, sir. Acts 16, 16. Acts 16, 16. Yes. Acts 16, 16. Yes. And it came to pass, as we went to prayer, a certain damsel uh -huh. possessed with a spirit of divination. Underline that word. Possessed with a spirit of divination. Uh -huh. Met us. Uh -huh. Which brought her masters much gain. Which brought her masters much gain. Hold on. By so saying. By so saying. Good, 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 good. Good, good. By so saying. He brought his masters much gain. Any prophecy that will benefit any prophecy that will benefit the, the prophet or prophetess is false. God says, I can say in the spirit, give me your house. It is a lie. I can say in the spirit, empty all your account and bring it to the, ch and bring it to the church. It is a lie. God, like I said on, on Thursday, the Receiver does not need obedience from God. The person that needs obedience to obey God is the giver. Who we hear from God. Somebody gave us, some people are, I'm bringing in money now because God has told them. Anyone that sows into this ministry will never lack. But people are bringing because they say God told, God said, God said. And it's all over. And of course, and you see, I don't talk money on air. Of course, no, 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 no. If I don't have money to be on air, I close, I tie rapper, I relax, I know God. I don't need to consult, to preach, to eat. And if people give their life to God, fine. <laughs> I'm not God. He does not add to me. He adds to my crown, of course. He that wins soul is wise, of course. And that is my gain, internally. And that's what we are doing. What we are doing. But to bring you under subjection, under pressure, to empty, empty your account. Some people go to the bank and borrow, and in order to help, to impress God. I'm telling you wh what is going on there. Because you have been bewitched. Stop looking at me like that. You can't do anything. The truth of the matter is that, let people understand this. Because... By the end of the day, soothsaying or soothsayers that does not have an answer or men to bewitch you or men to put fear upon you or men to make you like so, so we say if you leave this church, I cannot guarantee your blessing. My church is free entry, free exit because people come on their own, people can go on their own. In fact, and indeed, when members don't leave your church, there is a problem. It's, it's either you have compromised <coughs> or your message is not affecting them. Some people will still leave me. Some people, that's why I pray that any tree God did not plant must go, including every worker, even those who join me on air, even those who are pastors in the church. I pray it because you don't know anybody. And your messages can affect people. And for God to move you forward, to grow, some branches must fall. Some leaves must get out for you to grow. Give me Acts, Acts 19. Then I begin to round up from verse 12. Acts 19. 
Acts 19 from verse 12. Yes, sir. So that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons. Mm -hmm. And the diseases departed from them. Mm -hmm. And the evil spirit went out of them. Mm -hmm. Then certain of the vagabond Jews, mm -hmm. exorcists, mm -hmm. took upon them to call over them which had evil spirit, mm -hmm. the name of the Lord Jesus, Go ahead. saying, mm -hmm. We adjure you by Jesus, whom Paul preached. <laughs> I like that. And there were seven well, sons of one skiver. Well, hold on. I like, we adjure you by Jesus, which pastors or preachers. They don't believe what they say, the one Paul is preaching. But God, back to God, just, I like, each time I get there, this morning I laughed. Each time I get there, I must laugh. Yes. Yes. Verse 13 again. Yeah. Oh, you, you want to know, yeah, repeat. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Then certain <coughs> of the vagabond Jews, yes. exorcists, took upon them yes. to call over them which had evil spirit. Yes. The name of the Lord Jesus, uh -huh. saying, We adjure you by Jesus, whom Paul preached. Go ahead. And there were seven sons of one skiver, uh -huh. a Jew, uh -huh. and chief of the priest, uh -huh. who did so. Yeah. And the evil spirit answered and said, mm -hmm. Jesus, I know. Mm -hmm. And Paul, I know, mm -hmm. but who are you? Now, what? why did I use this scripture? Evil spirit can give us words of knowledge and wisdom. If you go to 1 Samuel 28, 17, the witch at Edom knew what happened to Saul, not from God. That information came from the realm, from the, from the demonic realm. So those prophecies that have been given you is not from God. And that is why the answer has not come. But I have to close with this. Prophecies are good. Are you bewitched? Because bewitchment can put a cloud, I mean a veil over you. And the, the words they speak can hinder you or your children. My prayer is this. Every spoken word by any man or woman of God, false men and women of God, by strong men or women, occultic men, evil men, over your destiny, over your marriage, over your wife, over your husband, over your children, even when spoken by, by teachers or those in authority over us, out of envy or jealousy, over our children. For that I decree and I declare, I let that veil, the, the words are veiled. I destroy them today in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is well with you. The, the veil has failed over your destiny in Jesus' name. I got to stop. The lines are already, uh, people are waiting. I will have a lot of text messages, but the lines should open. I'm sure that as you read, the text messages are getting to 30 something already. So, boy, it is well. We will try to read as much as we can, uh, but we still, the lines are still open. Yes, I will do so. It's a text message, sir. Yes, I will. say, please, Pastor, pray for me. I have been having problem in my work for the past two years now. Ah, two years is a long one, man. Also, two years is long. Uh, two years is either you must be, you, you must change your attitude. Uh, I can have a problem over two years, and they did not sack you, and uh, you did not resign. So that is funny. But well, but let God fight your battle. Of course, I don't know the problem. If if it is attitudinal problem, Father, we're asking. The Spirit of God to touch you, to hear your cry and fight your battle. In Jesus' name, my prayer. Yeah. Another text. Yeah. He said, Pastor, please, I need your prayer. My husband and I have been married for 22 and a half years. Wow. But never knew he has a 29 year old daughter. With the family, too, never told me. And she got married without, knowing, without me knowing. The man is denying the paternity of the girl, but his family brought the girl, and certainly I found out that the girl and my husband have been communicating. And still, when I confronted him with it, he still denies her. Please, sir, what is your advice? Well, number two, I mean, let me just, this one is crucial. Number two, let them check the paternity of the girl. Have they checked? If it is right, fine. There's nothing you can do. Of course, I mean, it is wrong. Your husband didn't tell you. But that is no, it just is... Uh, one of those issues, of course, and you and you move on. You have your children, I guess. If you have your children, I guess, and let it be part of your children. Even people adopt adopt children, even when they have their own 
children and they adopt children and treat them as their own. So you can equally see that as your adopted child and treat her as your own. Because to, if you show her opposite, your man will be hiding and they will be seen in secret. And that does not help you. So that to adopt her as your own and move ahead, but forgive him, move ahead and it is well. All right, Boko from Birmingham. How are you, sir? How are you, ma? Boko from Birmingham. I'm, I'm, I'm blessed, sir. God bless you so much. Amen. Amen. For the good work you are doing. Yeah, thank you. It's with all humility I pray that may the Lord Almighty Amen. continue to let his upper hand rest upon you. Amen. Wisdom from above. Amen. And may you continue to bless us Amen. with this um, um, uh, teachings. Amen. God bless you, sir. Thank you so much. Wow. Uh, yes, I'm with you. Please, please, sir. I want you to pray for me for empowerment in my Christian journey. Of course. My, that I, I may stand in this end time you and be faithful to God. Amen. As you study the word of God, it's not only by prayer. It is the studying Amen. of the word of God and the fear of God Amen. in you. You will ever make it. But I pray, Amen. let you, as you hunger for the word, and as Amen. you have prayed for me, let God bless you as well. In, in your journey of life, we, all of us, Amen. including me and you, we will succeed in this our journey in Jesus' Amen. name. All right? God bless Amen. you. All right, Lawrence from Italy. How are you, sir, God, Lawrence? God, God bless you, sir. God yes. bless you. Amen. Amen. I, this teaching, I, I really love it. I love it. Sir, my contribution to this teaching, Jesus said something. He said that he is the light of the world. That anybody that walk with him will never walk in darkness, according to the book of John chapter eight verse twelve. Yes. But I see today when you use that uh, that of North Korea. Sometimes when I watch that country, I laugh. Yes. People are in bondage. People are in vain. That is what happened when Nekebodananda was ruling. But. Sometimes when you read that scripture to us, 11, uh, the book of Daniel 1132b, yes. that those that know they are God, they will do exploit. Yeah. Many people, they go to church, they are in darkness. And me, I did not find that for Jesus Christ. Now, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were kidnapped. They put the give them a law. They say, never and ever. We are, we are not going to follow your destruction. We know our God. Coming back again in the book of Daniel chapter 6, what happened to, to, to Daniel too in the time of God, King Darius? The same thing. But today, people are in church one year, two years. Nothing changed. Me, I don't understand what is happening to them. God bless you, sir. I really love this teaching. God bless you, sir. Oh, thank you so much. And uh, Lawrence, thanks a lot. Lawrence, that even reminds me. So, Andrew, Lawrence texts us. He texts for the account. Details. In fact, as you were speaking, you see, human being, my brain remember the, the account, but your words are fantastic. And, and I thank you for sowing into the work. It will help us to be on air, sir. Thanks a lot. I'm sure yesterday I got a text from him that he needs the account. So please remember, I forgot. So thanks a lot for calling, and that activated the area of need. Man is man, and it is well. All right, Adeyemi from Excess. How are you, sir? Adeyemi. Good afternoon, sir. Yeah, how are you, ma? Yes, how are you, ma? Uh, I'm a man. Uh, I oh, need sorry. your prayer, sir. Okay. It's just, since 2014, around, and I was told it's demonic, demonic attack. Mm. Is that a stroke? Yes. Okay. So, okay, let me pray for you. But I hope you are taking your, your medicine. Yes, I do. You take your medicine and follow what the doctors will advise you because you're good, because that is man. But I'm going to pray for you. And I use you as a point of contact, sir. One, every, let God have mercy upon you in any way I've come short of his glory. I'm asking God that in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, every medication that you will take, it will work for you. Amen. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. My father, many people have recovered from stroke, but you will recover from this affliction and, and this stroke. I'm asking, Amen. in Jesus' most powerful name, I pray. It Amen. is well with you, sir. 
Don't give up. Just be hopeful. Take your medications and uh, follow the instructions of your doctors. You will still overcome in Jesus' Amen. name. God Amen. bless you, sir. God bless you, sir. All right? I will too. Yes, my sir. Say good evening, pastors. Please pray for me, for my documents I put in to come out positively. So, Father, I use this as a point of contact to my viewers. The issue of documentation is important. It makes us to plan. It makes you to be self-assured. It makes you to claim your right. Father, I'm praying. Let the favor of God and man follow every application of my viewers, each and every one of you. In Jesus' most powerful name, I have prayed. It's another text message. It says, Hallelujah. I apply to work in Her Majesty prison in UK as a prison officer. Please pray for me to be successful oh, and my checks to come out right. Oh, Father, of course, I agree with you in the name of Jesus. You didn't shout this hallelujah for nothing. The favor of God and man, and let's so that I let God use you to do that job uh, professionally well and glorify the name of this God whom we serve. Let you become a shining example in that place. In Jesus' name I have prayed. Amen. Yes. Yeah. Another text. He said, Pastor, God bless you, sir. Please, sir, pray for me for fruit of the womb. I have been married for, is it four and a half years? Old. For so, my Lord and my God, in the name that is above the name, concerning your daughters, my father, we are asking for intervention. You have had those who have stayed eight years, 11 years, and you bless them. So let her story, my father, change. Your parents gave back to you and your husband, both parents. So you will give back to your own, and that is the basis of our prayer. And God says increase and multiply. So, Father, I'm praying that let God visit you like Hannah, so that you will say there is none as holy as God. There's none as faithful as God. And there's none that can bless as God. In Jesus' name, I have prayed. And with this, another text. He yeah. said, Dear Pastor, please pray that my local council will cancel the trumped up charge of 20,000 pounds against me in Jesus' name. Trumped up. Well, I don't know how they can, well, trumped up. Well, let God fight your battle. <laughs> let God hear your cry. You say it is trumped up. If it is trumped up, let it become as Trump and get out of the way. In fact, talking about Trump, many of you don't know that. But I keep, like I told, I said it, I've gone to White House in the, in the, in the realm of the spirit. I didn't see him there. So I don't know what is going on. So I cannot understand it. But I hope the vice president is not the actual man that will eventually inherit that office. From uh, two times I've gone there, the, I didn't see him at all. So that, that it means a lot in the realm of the spirit. I'm with you. Another text message, sir. He said, please, pastor, I want you to pray for my son for peace to reign in his marriage. So, Father, I lift up your, your, this family and I, every family, every home need peace. And, in, and the homes of my viewers, let there be peace, let there be love. The peace among hus husbands and wives, hus children, father, daughters, sons, and parents. Father, we are asking for peace, but peace cannot come. If we cannot, if we don't know the Prince of Peace, and the Prince of Peace is Jesus Christ, that is the, that is it. Without Him, without Jesus in any marriage, including mine, it can't work because human beings are human beings. So that's why marriage is more spiritual than physical because two can be one physically, but two can be one spiritually, one heart that beats as one. It's only spiritual. It can't be physical. In Jesus' name. <coughs> In that text. Yeah. It's a man of God. I need prayers for God's guidance and protection and open doors. Let doors open. Oh, Revelation 3 8. I don't know who you are. Let doors open. And that door will lead you unto righteousness. As you are being blessed, it will not take you into the realm of, of worldly life. It will take you into the realm of life in. in in God. And that is the basic thing because at times the blessings move people from into the realm of the world. And they end up like Demas. He said, Paul says, Is this Demas? He, he has left me. 
He went back to the world. May you never go back to the world. Because Satan, the enemy, will be waiting. They'll say, ah, we nearly missed you. And that is my prayer in Jesus' name. I'm Jesus. And that is my Yeah. It's a good evening, Pastor. Please, I would like you to pray for me, especially my spiritual life. It's not as it used to be. And your message today remind me of a dream I had where somebody is putting makeup on my face. Wow. Not once. Well, uh, can you be that? Can you be that? Some of that job text. So thank God for the message and I pray. Every coverage, every spiritual coverage in order to hinder your spiritual performance, your, your spiritual strength, your spiritual connection, your spiritual gifts. My Lord and my God, by anyone under the influence of my voice, your spiritual state will turn around for good. In Jesus' most powerful name, I have prayed. Amen. Yes? I will you you yes. say, God bless you, Pastor. May you and all who stand with you, please pray for me. I'm going through health challenges, chest pains. Please pray for me. Thank you and God bless you. My Lord and my God, affliction and sickness is not from you. My Father, we are asking, let, uh, let deliver this young man or the woman from this affliction. Every medication will work. Let God use the doctors to do the right thing concerning your health issue. Any hand upon that health, God has removed them. Every medication you will take, it will work for you in Jesus' name. Do you know that some people take medication, it doesn't work? They take medication, all different kinds, it doesn't work. Yet that affliction is there. Of course, I think so far because of time, we have, we have been able to uh, reduce the text. Or you have one more. This one, this one. Yeah, just so it's a good Pastor, and yes. God bless you all Amen. of you in Jesus' name. Amen. Please, Pastor, could you pray for me because I have swollen toes on wow. my right leg with gout, with cough. Although I have done tests and GP said it is gout, but taking painkiller and the pain is severe. Please remember me in your prayers. Can you say? Can okay, you see what I said? At times, so Father, I'm praying. I will lift up because at times afflictions. This when they attack. Father, you do, Father, we, we are praying. Anyone, I don't know who you are, any kind of affliction or sickness or disease, Father, in the name of Jesus, they must respond to medication in Jesus' name. Because medicine is for man. Medicine is for the body. Medicine is like food unto this body. Let every medication work for your children. Let every affliction stop. Let every arrow backfire by fire. In Jesus' mighty name. I soak all my viewers in the blood of Jesus. Soak your family. Soak your husband in the blood. Soak your going out and coming in, in the blood of Jesus. There is somebody there. You, you will not die of accident in Jesus' name. I cancel that timetable of death. It will not be your portion in the name of Jesus. I think you have one more. One more. Because before I close, I don't hear it. The Spirit of God said, John, read that one. Yes, yes. Okay, so he said, yes. Pastor, could you, you please use the opportunity to explain for me the meaning of the dream above? That is receiving Holy Communion in your program, all in the dream. Ha! I don't know. You should know now. It is clear. Holy Communion, well, I won't want to praise myself now. But you know, go and ask of another pastor about it. But it means that what you are doing is of God. And uh, may God direct you to where God is. I don't know the person. He didn't put his name. He said, always receive Holy Communion. Communion. When you can, if you're a goat, you begat a goat. Let, in fact, there is somebody there. He has opened that door. In Jesus' name, tomorrow is Sunday. You can be part of our service, but go to church and praise God. Don't waste all the time watching all the football. I do watch, but there's time for everything. And God bless you. I will see you by His grace next week. And bye bye.